Super fast, 10 gigabits per second or even more IP data transfer between two devices for something like nine pounds using that little flimsy cable? And the answer is yes, of course. It all started uh, with me finding this generic no-name Thunderbolt cable in my drawer and uh, it made me thinking, what if I plug this to my mini PC running Windows and then the other end to my MacBook laptop, yes? I have MacBook Pro with M1 processor that has Thunderbolt 3 40 gigabits per second port and I also have Asus Nook which has Thunderbolt 4 port. They are both running at 40 gigabits per second speed because uh, only if you have Thunderbolt 5 you will get even a higher throughput. So. I connected those two devices. I just plugged in this cable and job done. There is a little beep sound. So something is going on. And when you check the system settings on your Mac, you will see something called a Thunderbolt bridge created. And it shows it has self-assigned IP address. This IP address might be strange looking for some, but it's actually called automatic private IP address. And it's usually configured when, when two devices want to talk to each other, but there is no dedicated DHCP server that would grant them the, these IP addresses. So these devices simply say, you know what, there might be no dedicated DHCP server, but I want to talk to you anyways. So let's assign some IP addresses our, ourselves, so we can have a chat. And it looks like my mini PC with Windows installed, which is on the other side of the connection, says, yeah, cool, <laughs> why not? And my Mac assigned IP address of 169.254.70.209 to itself. And if we go to Details, to Hardware tab, we can also see that we can configure something called Maximum Transmission Unit Size, if we want. And this is simply saying how big a single chunk of data can be sent over this connection. And currently that size is set to automatic, which is the standard size of 1500 bytes. But you can see you can change it here, and we will, but we will do it later on. If we now check what is on the Windows side, and I am RDP'd to my Nook 15 mini, mini PC, it's easier for me to record the screen this way. So I'm just RDP'd. And if we check network and internet settings, and if we scroll down to that advanced network settings, we can see this connection is shown as USB 4 point to point Ethernet 2 connection. And it shows the link speed of 20 gigabits per second. And I was like, why 20 gigabits per second and not 40 gigabits per second? And I started reading about it and it looks like it's <laughs> getting very confusing very quickly. And in fact, USB 4 connection can be detected as 20 gigs, 40 gigabits per second, 80 gigabits per second, or even 120 by 40 gigabits per second asymmetric. But you know what, I don't need a PhD on that. This is still good enough for me. All I did so far is simply I plugged in that cable to both devices and I have what is called now IP over Thunderbolt connection. And it's ready for me to use. So let's just check some uh, stuff on the Windows side. First, I want to know what is the IP address it assigned for itself. So in command line interface, I can simply run ipconfig forward slash all command. That will give me all information I need. And I can see that Ethernet 2 adapter, I can see it here, and I can see the IP address assigned to that adapter is 169.254.224.255. Sorry. And there is one more thing I wanted to mention here. This connection has no chance to break any of your existing network connections or internet connections you might have. Because while it's possible to change these IP addresses for this Thunderbolt link, I would simply leave them as they are now. What I mean is, I still have the standard IP addresses that I normally have for my Wi-Fi or cable connection. You can even see mine. It's 192.168.1.250. This is my wired connection to my router and to the internet. And that one still works fine. And it's not affected by this new network connection that has just been created. Okay, but let's run maybe some basic checks. Let's try if I can ping my MacBook laptop now. So I just run command ping 169.254.70.209 because that's what we saw on the Mac side and I can see the response. So we indeed have connectivity between those two devices. In the last check I want to print the routing table. I want to know if this traffic goes directly to the other side via that Thunderbolt link and indeed I can see that all traffic to 169.254.0.0 network 
go via my local link with IP of 169.254.224.251. And we can also see that all my other IP addresses and all traffic other than that still goes via my normal interface with IP of 192.168.1.250. But uh, going back to that maximum transmission unit, but here on Windows this time, this Ethernet is my standard wired connection. And if I go to advanced, I can see the fields where I can enable Jumbo packets. And the Jumbo packets are current, currently disabled, but uh, I can enable them if I want to. But if I go to that USB 4 point to point connection, which is going via that Thunderbolt cable, you will notice that these advanced options are different. And in fact, you don't have any Jumbo, jumbo frame settings. What is interesting though, it looks like the default MTU for USB 4 point to point connection is set to 62,000 bytes, which is much higher than even that 9,000 for jumbo frames. All right, but uh, you know, let's have a look first how this connection performs with those default settings. I will use program called iperf3. It's a very popular program in network engineering, engineering fields and it lets you test network connections for various different settings and different scenarios. And I run many tests and I will only show you the interesting ones. You can see I tried to run UDP test with bandwidth set to 30 gigabits per second, but the actual transfer was closer to 3 gigabits per second, and even then it had some packet loss. We will fix it though, so don't be disappointed. Now for the standard TCP connection with 10 parallel threads and all network settings still left at default, if I run that test, we can see some great results already. In fact, on multiple segments, the speed exceeds 10 gigabits per second. We get something between 9 and 11 gigabits per second speeds for this con connection. And uh, guys, I don't know what you think, but uh, for me, this is already awesome. We just plugged in that crappy cable <laughs> that cost a few pounds and we get speeds over 10 gigabits per second for TCP. But let's fiddle a bit with those settings for this Thunderbolt link. Let's first try to enable jumbo frames on the Mac side. So that's how we enable it. And when I rerun those tests for TCP, I noticed that now they are much more consistent and I get nearly always around 11 gigabits per second for every single segment. And you can see that uh, this test, uh, I run it for a while and the result for each segment is very similar to the previous one. I then tried to run it in reverse mode, which means the Windows, which is the currently a server, it will be sending the traffic to Mac. So Mac will be receiving it. And the results are even better. We get now close to 15 gigabits per second. I noticed one thing. When I run it for prolonged time, I could see that the traffic starts slowing down after a while. And I'm not sure what is the reason for that. Is, is it some kind of overheating, some other issue? But you can see it starts very fast and then slows down to like 7 or 8 gigabits per second. But even then, we still get like 12.5 gigabits per second average speed for that connection, which I think is a great result. I then configured iperf servers on both sides. So Windows was running iperf server on default port 5201, and the Mac was running also its own iperf server, and I changed this port to 5202. I mean, it's not needed to change the, the port, it was simply for me to make sure they are indeed two separate connections and I don't mess up anything. And I then rerun those tests both ways, specifying the ports as well, as you can see, and we can get 10 gigabits per second one direction and over 8 gigabits per second the other direction. And both streams were running at exactly the same time. So that means we kind of utilize 20 gigabits per second, but only 10 gigabits per second each way at a time. But uh, what about that MTU? Because if we don't, if we remember on the on the Windows, it's kind of 62,000 by default. We don't need to be limited to standard jumbo frame si uh, sizes. Let's have a look at those settings again. If I can change those values on Mac side, why don't we change it to match the Windows side? 62,000 for MTU size. When you click that custom button, it shows you that it will accept all sizes up to 65,518. So let's set it to 62,000. And uh, if I double check, it is 62,000 indeed now as configured value for this uh, MTU. And let's run maybe a UDP test. We can set this test, hard code the speed to 10 gigabits per second. And we can also utilize that MTU size of 62,000. When I run this test, I, I'm not sure why it mentions the maximum segment size for TCP, because I'm running UDP, not TCP, but have a look. We have achieved 
nearly exactly 10 gigabits per second for UDP now as well. And you can see very slight packet loss as this receiver can only get 9.98 gigabits per second over that connection, but that is fine. This is simply the UDP uh, overhead, etc. you know. But we simply know that these are the settings for UDP that start maxing out this type of, uh, of the connection. We start seeing some packet loss, just 0.2% or so, but it runs at 10 gigabits per second. And I could keep testing loads of different combinations forever, but that is not my point. My point is, if you need a fast connection, like close to 10 gigabits connection between two devices that do not have currently a network card supporting those speeds, then you normally would have to look at solutions like, for example, Thunderbolt to 10 gigabits per second Ethernet adapters. But those things are super expensive. They are still expensive. 10 gig uh, per second network devices are still very pricey, you know, and you need two of them. So then, maybe this little cable is a solution for you. I mean, yes, of course, there are two big drawbacks of this solution that I'm not trying to hide. First of them is that this is point-to-point -point connection. You can't plug that cable into the switch and share this connection with other devices. This is dedicated connection between, let's say, your PC and maybe network-attached storage and nothing else. And second, this cable needs to be Thunderbolt cable. And Thunderbolt cables are pretty cheap if you are okay with the short one, like this one. It's a half a meter, I think. Uh, but they can get very expensive very fast when you need much longer one. But if none of this is a problem for you, then maybe, inst maybe, I'm just saying maybe, maybe instead of span spending hundreds of dollars on 10 gigabits per second networking equ equipment, Maybe try with this little cable first and see if this is a solution for you. I hope that this video might help you somehow and thank you for watching. Marek.